Hello, this is an English podcast. I am your host, Vladimir Svitashev, and my guest today is Vladislav Forsh. I've been running an English-speaking club since 2017. Vlad started coming to the club a year after. In some sense, we've been studying English together for a couple of years. Now we're going to have a conversation about the language. Hello, Vlad. Hey, yo. Thank you for inviting, inviting me. When did you start studying English? So, I get my first taste of English language when I was seven years old. And my father has been studying English for some time. I remember that he was studying English by... So, every month he was getting uh, this journal. Journal. It called Yeshka. European sc- School of uh, Correspondence Learning. Correspondence, it means that you learn by, by, get, by getting mail. And uh, it was like... Uh, monthly textbooks and you have been doing something and I was interested and at that time when I was seven years old my father was able to get a first personal computer and one of the first software he installed it was uh, this learning uh, English for kids it was you know it was really basic it was just a picture with different items for example uh, one of the topics was fruits and you just have to click on something and just it, it will be it's an apple it's a pineapple and so on so you can say that i start when i was seven years old but then it was like three years uh, gap until i have been uh, studying I- uh, english in school mm-hmm. so before before school you studied with your father very little maybe mm-hmm. it was one month but it was not serious. Mm-hmm. So how much uh, time did it take to develop the ability to understand native speakers? So it would be easier if um, to recreate the timeline of how I did mm-hmm. learn the, the mm-hmm. language. So after sc- I learned the English at school and it uh, at university, but I didn't know it well. Really, I was just average because I wasn't interested. Uh, seriously, I start to take it seriously when I was 20 years old. So uh, till, t- till 20 years old, you haven't uh, been able to understand native speakers? As much as an average student mm-hmm. in, in so Russian school. So you just school. Uh, read some textbooks and... Yeah, uh, exactly. Some it was exercises. one lesson a week and mm-hmm. uh, it was mm-hmm. all. You, you didn't use uh, English in your daily life? No, not at time. all. Okay. Not at all. Okay. And then I started... I became really interested in language and um, I have been watching a lot of TV shows mm-hmm. and but uh, when I say a lot I mean a lot imagine like four hours every day mm-hmm. I've been watching some TV shows mm-hmm. and uh, like when, you were st- you, when you were 20, right? tw- 20 yeah, when, I, when, I tw- when I was 20 mm-hmm. and then after I think four years I realized Oh, I can understand them really well. I don't ev- I don't need subtitles anymore. Mm-hmm. So it took me four years when I get it, when I got it. Was it like every day four hours of watching t- TV shows or just t- time by time? Pretty much, yeah. I was like TV show junkie. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can open this IMDb top list and probably I watch like 80% of this. Mm-hmm. Oh, I remember it was one... So I have been watching this British TV show, and the thing with uh, with Britain, it's it's a small country, but there are just a lot of different accents and dialects. So at, at one show you can hear a British, you can see, see uh, hear an English, Irish, Scottish, Welsh, and it's all like in one minute. And I have been watching this show, and then after watching, I realized, oh my God, it was like five different people who spoke five di- five different uh, forms of English, and I was able to get it all. But I think I was 26 at this age. Uh, when did you, uh, what did you feel when you started speaking English? Uh, like, n- not just understanding native speakers, but uh, when you started speaking yourself? Like what was the feeling and how, how it went? I- I didn't speak English for a long, long time. So basically all my learning was just uh, reading and watching something. Mm-hmm. And I have been doing this for seven or eight years. And then I discovered that we have uh, these speaking clubs mm-hmm. in our city in Kaluga. Mm-hmm. And I started to going there. But before that, I, 
I didn't practice what was the al- year? almost at all. What was the year when you started coming to the speaking club? It was 17. So 2017. 2017, mm-hmm. yeah. It's like you were like 20, 27? Mm-hmm, exactly. Mm-hmm. Before that, I didn't travel, so I didn't use my language. Uh, I use my language at work, but we mostly do emails or just messengers. Mm-hmm. We don't speak much. Maybe it was once in a six months something like this mm-hmm. it wasn't a r- it it wasn't a real practice mm-hmm. so uh, uh can can you say that it was like when you started speaking you realized that you already know language or you thought that you know language when you didn't speak when you could just uh, read and watch uh, tv shows like wh- what was the moment when you realized that you already know english I think I think the this moment is ahead of me. Uh-huh. <laughs> so you still don't know. <laughs> I don't. Again, it's uh, with whom you are gonna compare me uh-huh. with, right? But uh, still, for example, I, I still feel mentally exhausted when I speak English after two hours. Mm-hmm. It's like my brain hurts. Mm-hmm. But still, so you can understand and you can say things uh, almost like w- almost everything very clearly. You can discuss a variety of topics without having trouble with vocabulary with almost with anything yeah, I'm not yeah. saying that it's like your English is perfect or, or you know mm-hmm. like I'm just trying to uh, like there should be a kind of feeling uh, oh it's like now I know English I, it's like I've done it I, I, comp- I can I can improve it I can make it better but at least like now it's English is kind of my second language I can use it whenever I want mm-hmm. Maybe because uh, this process of learning was very gradual and for a long, long time I didn't have this aha moment. Mm-hmm. Oh, now I knew, uh, mm-hmm. now I know. Mm-hmm. I didn't have it yet. Mm-hmm. Maybe okay, again. okay. Uh, tell about your teacher or teachers and their impact on you. Mm-hmm. I cannot share anything. I didn't have any teacher who stand out for me because uh, I have learned the language mostly by myself. Mm-hmm. But... Uh, have you learned it from TV shows and from you know, from the internet, from books? Uh, was there a person who influenced you, or maybe it's it was kind of you know not not a mm-hmm. person, but some some different people? I think a good example it was my father, mm-hmm. uh, but he didn't teach me. It was just something you someone in your family do something so you probably you do it because you saw them uh-huh. do you speak english with your father no not at all no? <laughs> he have been trying to learn language really hard when he was younger uh-huh. because he wanted to move uh, someplace else mm-hmm. but uh, then he kind of uh abandoned this idea and uh, he stopped learning English at all. Now he doesn't practice? No, mm-hmm. not at all. Okay. Were there some fundamental changes uh, in the way you been studying the, the language? There, there was one. So when I just started, when I was 20 years old, I have been doing all this um, basic stuff. I have been learning podcast about how to learn English. Mm-hmm. I have been listening to all these people who are trying to teach you how to speak English. But then when I get this basic stuff, I realized you can just listen and learn about what interesting interesting for you. Mm-hmm. You don't have to continue uh, going over these learning materials. Mm-hmm. Everyone has some hobby of s- or some interest of yours. And you can just go and uh, read about it. You will be motivated more because you're interested in it. You have genuine interest mm-hmm. in this. So for me, it was like, it was probably most fundamental change. Uh, what kind of interest uh, can you elaborate mm-hmm. on a little bit more? So initially, when I was 20 years old, I was a student and uh, I was going to become software engineer. Mm-hmm. So it was one of the, my biggest interests. And I just found plenty of stuff about it. And it was, I, I did notice that quality of this was much better than I could find in Russian. Mm-hmm. So for me, it was just be, uh, immediate. I can, s- I can see that it will, uh, that it is very big professional advantage. Mm-hmm. 
but then it was i was interested in fitness i was interested in nutrition i was interested in uh, self-help liter literature and i was able to found much more in english than it was in russian so can i say that it's like the best way of studying english for you just to get in information yeah exactly uh, okay okay uh did you have a lot of people to compete with oh that's in a your experience. good question mm -hmm. it's not an obvious but yes i did my girlfriend at the time we have been attending the same english class at the university and she was better than me and it annoyed me <laughs> because i really like to be smartest quote in the room and uh, kind of intellectual superiority is my, my shtick and it did bother me so i decided i decided that I need to learn English so I, I could mm -hmm. be better than her. So just one person, your girlfriend or somebody else? After that, it wasn't a competition. After that, mm -hmm. I didn't... I so how much time did it take to <laughs> over, over what, reach here? <laughs> Not much. I think maybe an year or so. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's cool. Uh, how much time would you take would it take to learn a new language with the experience you've already had? Hmm. Like if you start learning a new language, what do you think how much time it takes for you? It's really hard. If I knew at least th three languages, mm -hmm. I can m make some predictions, but with only two, probably it if it would be the English from the same family, mm -hmm. German or something like this, it would be easier. But if it will be completely different in uh, language like Chinese, I think my uh, English experience won't help me at all. Mm -hmm. Because I know that some people, uh, they have some techniques when they learn, learn the language methodically. Mm -hmm. They have s some techniques how to do it. Mm -hmm. But I, I have done it very sporadically, so I don't have any. I, d I don't think that I develop any habits or techniques which could help me with with a new language. But it's like a rough prediction. Mm -hmm. like to re to reach the level which you have now in English, uh, would it take like ten years or five years or two or three years? Two or three years. Yeah, so if you uh, decide to study language, if you focus on it. Which it's is not likely to happen, mm -hmm. to be honest. Uh, so, can I say that uh, you don't, like, what do you think about your progress in language, like, for the last years? Does, mm -hmm. it, uh, gets, does, it get, does it get better, or it stays as it were, like, two or three years ago? Uh, to be honest, I think I it's the same level, maybe it's even getting worse, because uh, I go to the speaking clubs, mm -hmm. And I repeat my mistakes with pronunciation and grammar again and mm -hmm. again, and nobody corrects me. So it just become like a bad. Yeah, but habit. you still have more practice. Uh, you, you, you. But you do something in the wrong way, and you. <laughs> so it's it's not an improvement. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, to reach the level like uh, this level doesn't it doesn't need to go through like ten years just couple of years and you are already be able to speak another language probably if you if you start studying it. yeah i i like this idea that people constantly overestimate how much you can achieve in uh, short mm -hmm. term but mm -hmm. underestimate how you much you can achieve in the long run mm -hmm. and two and three years is just insane amount of time mm -hmm. and if you make a learning a new language a habit in two or three years, y y you will able to master. Uh, let's language. let's uh, speak about the time. Like how much time should you learn? Like uh, an hour a day, two hours a day to get to this level. Hour a day, I would say hour hour a day. Okay. Uh, what is the impact that English had on your life, in general? Oh, I, probably most impactful thing which which happened with me mm -hmm. happened because of English. So my work, I am software engineer and I work uh, remotely and I work with people all over the world mm -hmm. and we all, we all, all communicate with English. Pro this is a very big impact. Second of all, I have met my, uh, my girlfriend mm -hmm. uh, at the speaking club mm -hmm. and again, we have been dating for two and a half years 
<laughs> I think she is very impactful person. So at least these two reasons, uh, these two things happen because I have been learning English and it's already enough. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's like your girlfriend and your work. Mm -hmm. uh, it's basically helped you to be better at work and to find a girlfriend. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Uh, what do you think about the role of English in globalization? I think we are going this way. Probably English will become much simpler. Probably it will acquire some elements from other most popular languages. But it will become this lingua franca of all world. I, I think English will become this universal worldwide language. Because if you don't, if you don't want to speak it, it would be a disadvantage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, is there something that you don't like about the language? I think as most people who, who know English, I just think that their phonetic system is just so awful. <laughs> Words uh, sounds completely different than how they look. Yeah, yeah. Probably... And another thing which I don't like, let me say first about what I like, do like very much about English language. And uh, then I will talk about this uh, second downside. So I really like about English that it's very informational dense. So to convey the same idea in English, you need fewer words. I know just two languages, Russian and English. So I am comparing these two languages. As you know, I really like different idioms and aphorisms. And what is an aphorism? It's when you have few words and a lot of meanings. And in this, English language is truly shining. So when you try to translate some uh, English idiom in Russian, it becomes so clumsy and long. Or even if, if you ever will try to translate some English text in Russian, just by, by amount of symbols and pages, it would be longer. But because of this, because of informational density, so you have a lot of meaning in just one word, we have this big amount of uh, phrasal verbs in English, when the same verb can mean uh, completely different things. Not completely, but different things. So you have look up, lo look around, look down, look for, and I, I already get used to it, but I can see how it would, it is really confusing for nov uh, newbies. Mm -hmm. Non-native speakers. Mm -hmm. So I it's a big problem that there are lots of, uh, lots of different ways to say something and it's hard to understand and you need to learn all this in order to be, in order to be able to understand native speakers. And plus, it's uh, kind of, uh, it's like it's short. And if you know language, it's, it's very uh, beneficial for you. But if you don't mm -hmm. know, it's like it makes you confused when you speak. And right. Also, there are many kind of irregularities in languages. Like you have uh, uh, this, how is that called? So you, ha you have eat. But you d don't have eaten, you mm -hmm. have ate, mm -hmm. and it's also confusing. It's like but ir ir irregular <laughs> verbs, yeah. But I think that uh, these uh, things may go away when uh, English will become more universal. Maybe it will transform. It will it will become even more accessible than it it is right now. Mm. Do you think it's like better to use simple language and to say things uh, like very simple or? you will try to impress other people just using phrasal verbs or like words which only you may, may know, may understand. If you can convey very complex idea with a simple words, do this. It will make it even better. What type of content do you like to consume in English? No, nowadays, almost exclusively, I just listen to podcasts. I have discovered uh, them this whole idea of podcast five years ago and since then 
I have, I think, around eight different uh, shows which I listen regularly. By uh, regular, I mean I listen at least for one hour a day. But again, I just don't dedicate this hour only to listening. I usually do something else uh, at the same time. Most of these podcasts uh, they about psychology, and uh, they uh, some of them comedy podcasts, some of them about just science like history, biology. Yeah, of course, my favorite ones is uh, Tim Ferriss show. Another one is Armchair Expert with uh, Dax Shepard. The third one is uh, says it's called Akimbo, Akimbo by Seth Seth Godin. This uh, the last one is really unusual because almost every other podcast I listen they have a form of interview like we're doing right now but this one is just a monologue of one man he takes some usually simple complex idea and they talk about it for 15 uh, minutes in in a really simple way and he uses a, a lot of real life examples from examples from history and I just found it insanely engaging so it's like basically podcasts and uh, like in reading, like it's also like, what do you do? Read something in English? Yeah, I read, but again, I don't read to learn the language. I, I read be- because I have to learn something for, for my profession, for my job. Also, I, I have noticed uh, this unusual thing. I don't know if it happened with uh, other people who learn English. So when I consume content only in English, it is harder for me to speak in Russian. I I constantly use some uh, English words in my Russian <laughs> in my Russian uh, sp- uh, speaking and I don't like it. So I try to limit myself and I try to read something in Russian so I won't lose my ability to speak well in Russian. Yeah, that's kind of crazy. So you just you, you become better at one language and you lose mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Your this is one of the reasons why I don't want to learn a mm-hmm. third language, another mm-hmm. language, because I I just don't have enough mental capacity for three languages. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, do you believe that it's possible to switch one's thinking entirely on English and abandon one's native language? Oh, that's a good follow-up question. Yes, yeah. I think that uh, you won't have even try hard to do this. If everything you will consume will be in English, you automatically you will start thinking in English. Mm-hmm. There were some periods in my life when I didn't speak much with with people at all, mm-hmm. and all I have done is was reading and listening English, and it happened automatically. So I noticed one day I have been going down sta- uh, going down from my apartment. And the whole way I have been thinking in English, even without trying. Mm-hmm. So it happened naturally. So I can see like something like this could happen if you will move to another country. And again, you will be uh, all the time surrounded by another language and it will just come naturally. So it depends on how much content you consume. If you don't consume uh, like your native l- content in your native language and consume only in English, you'll automatically uh, start thinking in English. That's right. Okay, okay. Uh, What would you say to those who want to study English but don't have enough motivation? Don't do it. (laughs) Less (laughs) competition for me. Yeah, (laughs) you don't want it, don't do it. So you wouldn't encourage people to to study language? Uh, Serious answer would be don't rely on motivation, right? Motivation is for amateurs. Mm -hmm. Make it a habit. Mm -hmm. You don't have any valid excuse nowadays when you have this insane amount of applications and resources to learn the language just take a 10 minutes a day and Mm -hmm. start doing this and to just just develop a habit to study uh, like minimum amount of time every day like at least 10 15 20 minutes Uh, that's right exactly another thing i would suggest for me um great motivation always was uh, real life examples Mm -hmm. so when you see when you can see someone in real life who can do it well Mm 
mm-hmm. it was always the biggest motivation for me mm-hmm. and again we and have role model yeah role model you can mm-hmm. say a role model so we can have a speaking club several of them in our city and you can go there you don't have if you if you're shy you don't have to speak mm-hmm. we have some people who just come and listen mm-hmm. but again you may uh, you may encounter some person who can speak really well and you can see th- and you can see with your own eyes it's possible mm-hmm. i know sometimes some native natives comes to comes to our speaking clubs people from usa or britain and they told me a few times that they were really surprised mm-hmm. how well can people speak Mm-hmm. So you can find people who who speak well even in our city. Mm-hmm. So go and uh, look. So fi- fi- find fi- find the role model and just to follow. Let's ch- try trying to learn to. Yeah, to and learn, people always it. will be glad to share their experience. Mm-hmm. So you can just come and ask how 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 you can speak this well, and they will be just happy to share. Mm-hmm. Okay. What do you think about the idea of using English to study yourself? I think these two ideas, topics, they are not related. Uh, I think n- knowing English is not a requirement at all to know yourself. Mm-hmm. So to, honestly, I don't see how they are related. Yeah, but just uh, like imagine that you don't know English and you may use it to like, like you don't have motivation. Right, but you may just instead of studying language, you may start studying yourself, like your behavior, your, you know, communication, your social circle, whatever, just everything, what's going on. It's like you do. You said you started studying English and you started uh, using information mm-hmm. uh, for your job, uh, right? To to f- to f- to, f- to find something that's really important for you, right? Mm-hmm. Some habits, uh, whatever, and uh, studying English, like studying yourself, means that you just study what you are doing and just write about it you may speak about it you may again just try to instead of getting lots of uh lots of information from the internet or books you just you translate in english your own thoughts and your own like ideas your own actions you try to support your actions with this uh, with, with new language so you may do it in your own language as well mm-hmm. but the idea is like you may use english and uh instead of studying the language you study yourself and english is just uh, an instrument a tool which helps you to understand your, yourself better by the way uh, how much mm-hmm. do you understand yourself like what your what's your guess like, do you know yourself or there's i don't know what i don't know right mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> <So> <laughs> well you know, this uh, psychology ideas about unconscious for example studying yourself also may be related to the idea of studying your unconscious desires or unconscious beliefs I think both both of these uh, ideas, studying English and studying yourself, they are really mm, hard. I not hard ideas. They are not easy. Mm-hmm. They it's not easy things to do. But if you would like to do something for a long time, it should be frictionless at at least at the beginning. Mm-hmm. So maybe at later stages, when you already ne- know English well, you can start to use it. Mm-hmm. to know yourself better but f- i don't recommend it for beginners but the beginners think it's gonna fail yeah because it's like both two, two th- both things are hard mm-hmm. and it's like it's better to do them separately yeah uh, but again i don't think that this is a requirement you can find plenty of books uh, and in in your native language mm-hmm. about psychology and yeah but i guess like it's more about previous question about motivation so mm-hmm. you want to study language you don't have enough motivation but then you start like applying it for studying yourself and then in this way you may just try to well it's like it's not we are not arguing <laughs> like yeah it was better was like your idea is like it's better to study language but first and then but to support your idea mm-hmm. when i just started my very first website i have been reading consistently in english was some self-help about mm-hmm. how to to know to understand mm-hmm. yourself better mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But again, it's like you are reading somebody else's work, and yeah. this idea of studying yourself is basically about studying, like you yourself, mm-hmm. what you're doing, why you're doing that. Mm-hmm. Like you don't, uh, it's like your language, like all your language, is 
they all your vocabulary everything you use is built on real on real actions and your real thoughts your thoughts so mm-hmm. it's about somebody else's advices and somebody else's words but okay anyway let's, uh-huh. let, let's move on uh how many how may english help to overcome struggles in life it's like what do you think about this idea i think it's a valid idea i think so when you achieve something you usually feel more confident Mm -hmm. and i think you have when you learn english it's like infinite amount of achievements Mm -hmm. ahead of you you can just put some goals and you can achieve it and you can feel yourself better especially when kind of uh intelligence is one of your mm, values mm-hmm. major val- values also you you can compete you can compete by uh, how well you know english among your peers uh do you agree with the statement that uh, people who know two languages are tend to be smarter than those who don't I am biased in this regard. <laughs> <laughs> of course I agree. <laughs> but uh, again, I am biased but every person who almost every person who I met at speaking club I usually enjoy talking with mm-hmm. because it's not just about learning English, it's about general curiosity. So mm-hmm. Usually people interested not just in these topics, they usually interested in just about everything around and it make better conversation it make when you surrounded by people like this it make you automatically a better person because you see it in other you understand that you are not the only person who like who is like this it motivates you mm-hmm. so yeah i think there is some correlation between knowing a lan- uh, uh, another second language mm-hmm. and being more intelligent how about five languages <laughs> like or I don't know may, many languages mm-hmm. like, w- w- would you be smarter if you know like five or ten languages or you would just know a little bit in each language but you wouldn't be able to go deeper like from my limited understanding mm-hmm. I just can't imagine how you know well let's say five languages mm-hmm. three I could believe this mm-hmm. But again, I, uh, maybe I'm, I'm just, I don't have talent in this regard. Uh, I know that some, again, it's, it's a skill and some people may have a natural talent mm-hmm. to do it better. So th- they we will put the same amount of time into this, but they will become much, much better than me. Mm-hmm. So maybe it's okay for some people, but I won't be able to do this. I if i will try to develop another language i will lose my ability to speak well mm-hmm. in russian and in english top three reason reasons for studying english mm-hmm. that's a good one it gives me the sense of uh superiority <laughs> I, I i i i will be just honest about it i like uh, going to speaking clubs and uh, I like to discuss some ideas which we don't discuss in other places and I like that I have something to say I enjoy this as- aspect immensely the second one is probably my job I can make an argument that if in my domain software engineering if if you don't know English well you could be mediocre at best and uh, the last one it uh, just curious yeah i think i'm curious person by nature and again I- when you know english you have much more information available for you in any topic nowadays when i become interested in something i usually just go to reddit i don't know if our listeners heard about reddit reddit it's one of the most popular website and I- it have just insane amount of some obscure groups of people who could be interesting in almost everything what's your like favorite group it's my guilty pleasure they have a reddit it's called ugly duckling so it's about people who was uh, ugly when they were young when they were kids 
and then uh, when they post photos when they become really really gorgeous adults it's my guilty pleasure but probably i do it every month i go and check uh, i know you you've been running your own club for a couple of years like yeah can you tell a little bit about this experience how it was going and why did you stop doing that it was out of necessity so there was another guy who had been running this club and then ha suddenly he just disappeared and i really like these meetings i uh, i have been going there for for a year and we have developed this close-knit community and i really like spending two hours of my week there so i decided to take lead and start doing this it was really really hard for me but if you would like to develop a s s kind of social confidence <laughs> probably is one of the most ways even if you are not uh, in charge you just go uh, to speak in club and you have to speak in foreign language in front of strangers if you can, can do this everything else is like a breeze after i have been in running for nine months but i have stopped doing this i found uh, a person who would like to take to take a lead and i was uh, happy to do this because it required for me some amount of time to prepare not much i usually spend two hours uh, day before for preparation but still uh, i my pre priorities a little bit change i decided that i need to dedicate more time to my work so it just happened naturally and then i found this person who would like to to take a charge and we we done this but it was a really great experience and w yeah probably it was terrifying at first and maybe it's why it it made it so memorable okay so thank you a lot for a conversation it was a great pleasure it's an honor for me to be a first guest. I have been listening to podcast for a long, long time. And I, I was just so excited to, to be a part of one, finally. Thank you as well.